the most famous and accessible of these canyon valleys, and also the one that presents the most striking and sublime features on the grandest scale, is the Yosemite, situated in the basin of the Merced River at an elevation of 4,000 feet above the level of the sea. It is about seven miles long, half a mile to a mile wide, and nearly a mile deep in the solid granite flank of the range. The walls are made up of rocks, mountains in size, partly separated from each other by side canyons, and they are so sheer in front and so complacently and harmoniously arranged on the level floor that the valley, comprehensively seen, looks like an immense hall or temple lighted from above. But no temple made with hands can compare with Yosemite. Every rock in its walls seems to glow with life. Some lean back in majestic repose, others absolutely sheer or nearly so for thousands of feet, advance beyond their companions in thoughtful attitudes, giving welcome to storms and calms alike, seemingly aware yet heedless of everything going on about them. Awful in stern, immovable majesty, how softly these rocks are adorned, and how fine and reassuring the company they keep. Their feet among beautiful groves and meadows, their brows in the sky, a thousand flowers leaning confidingly against their feet, bathed in floods of water, floods of light, with the snow and waterfalls, the winds and avalanches and clouds shine and sing and wreathe about them as the years go by, and myriads of small weaned creatures, birds, bees, butterflies, give glad animation and help to make all the air into music. Down through the middle of the valley flows the Crystal Merced, River of Mercy, peacefully quiet, reflecting lilies and trees and onlooking rocks. Things frail and fleeting and types of endurance meeting here and blending in countless forms, as if into this one mountain mansion, nature has gathered her choicest treasures to draw her lovers into close and confiding communion with her. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here, and those were the words of John Muir from his wonderful book, The Yosemite, all about the Yosemite Valley in California. And uh, today we're going to be taking a little look at a game called Rocky Mountain Man. So while John Muir was not actually a Rocky Mountain Man, he was an explorer, and he wrote about the wilderness he explored and in Rocky Mountain Man, you are playing as a group of trappers exploring the Rocky Mountains in Colorado and parts of kind of like Utah and a little bit of the plains to the east. You are exploring this land, trying to map out the somewhat dangerous territories while you are making deals, perhaps fighting, perhaps becoming friends with the tribal people of the land, all in the hopes of setting up traps to uh, catch your, uh, beer, your beaver pelts and uh, really just make it out of this treacherous wilderness alive. So this is a pretty interesting game, uh, Rocky Mountain Man. And it says it's a solitaire to two players, um, two hours, too many more. Uh, before the old American West, there was a mysteriously large, unknown mountain region west of the Mississippi known as the Rocky Mountains. Characterized by its rocky geography, this mountain range spans from northern New Mexico into Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana, and ending in British Columbia. The mountain men were the first people of the young United States to venture into the unknown Rockies and begin to live among it. So uh, one of the cool things about this game, one of the things I really enjoy is its dedication to history. You have a lot of information uh, in the rule book that really does set the scene and goes into the historic background of the time. Uh, I think like the early 19, uh, the early, what is it, 1850s, I believe. Um, yeah, early 1800s, early 1800s, the game takes place. And uh, one of the things that I really appreciate is its attention to detail and how it depicts and treats the tribal people, the natives, the American Indians, 
and it has a the rule book has a long uh, a nice section in the back about American Indians versus indigenous people how the creators of the game studied the people of the the Ute uh, tribes talked to them uh, read about the, the, uh, the, their history to determine what to call them in the game and just it, it it feels like this game does a really respectful kind of um, takes a respectful look at everything that was going on during this time and I do really appreciate that so the game I'm playing a, 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 in a solo manner and I am playing in the campaign mode which the campaign mode, you are going to be working through seasons as you explore the Colorado mountains, the, the Rocky Mountains. And the ultimate goal is to, is to establish a trade outpost. And when you establish that trade outpost, the campaign is over. And then you tally up certain things you've done to gain victory points, and you can see what your uh, victory points are. Now, one of the interesting things is if you play this as a two-player game, both players are basically playing the solitaire game simultaneously. You don't take turns. You're both playing together on the same map, working your way. And what you do is even in the solitaire game or in the single player game, is you pick a time limit for each season. So you can play like a 30 minute seasons to an hour, and then you set a timer and you play for that many minutes or well, 30 minutes to an hour and then that season is over and then you go on to the next season so right now i am in summer and each season is going to have different things that affect the game with summer and spring being a little more a little easier to get through and uh, fall and of course winter being very harsh because the winters were very harsh in this land to survive and so you're going to be taking a leader and a group of hired men out into the wilderness and your leaders can have skills they can be soldiers hunters businessmen doctors uh, guides tribal and skill guides and you can also take tourists and garrisons out tourists want to visit certain uh, site locations and they will pay you a lot of money to go to those locations as um, as a you can be a, like a, a tour guide but right now, my leader is a businessman because really uh, the businessmen were an important part of exploring the American West. And I have in my uh, outfit here, I have two soldiers, I have two hunters, I have a doctor, and I have a Ute guide and a Shoshone guide. Uh, I have right now, I have 11 beaver pelts that I have captured in my traps that I have set along this uh, trail here that I am exploring. I have 37 rations. Each turn, at the end of each turn, you're going to have to hunt. And any uh, you, you, you want to get as much food as you have people in your outfit. And any difference you have to make up for with rations. As you run out of rations, you might start to starve. And then uh, your crew members are going to leave. I have 10 rifles. So that's I have 8 people in my outfit right now. And I have 2 extra rifles to use for trading with... Uh, perhaps some of the other trappers that might come out like NPC trappers or maybe I can trade with the tribal people that I uh, come across. I don't have a canoe right now. Canoes can be used for quick travel down the uh, Colorado River or the Arkansas River or any offshoots or any little rivers and lakes and bodies of water that you find as you are exploring. I have um, Ten, I have nine ride mounts. I had ten, one for each. So as you are exploring, as you are moving from hex to hex, all of your people, if they're all on horse, you get a certain number of movements. And if one person is without a horse, then you have to go on that slow, uh, slow travel. But I also uh, used a horse to trade with uh, a tribal uh, people that I found here. And I have two pack mounts, uh, two mules basically. I am not playing with uh, the advanced rules where I keep track of weight, but I think the next time I play the game, I will. So the game itself, um, if you are new to this kind of like hex mapping, a little bit of a war game style of, of, of rules and um, kind of sensibilities, I do recommend watching the how to play video from the creator. I found that really useful. 
It's a long video at about an hour and a half, but I watched that and then read the rule book and I had no problems uh, learning the game from that. But the game is gonna be divided into turn sequences. The first uh, turn, the first sequence, the first phase is you're going to decide how you are going to move. You can move into an explored hex, an explored adjacent hex for one movement point and that will give you uh, that'll be a, a, an easy move where you don't have to draw for danger but if you move uh, two or more hexes or you move in from an explored hex into an adjacent unexplored hex that costs three movement points well then you're going to have to draw for uh, you're going to have to look up your, your, your danger draw and the game comes with a, some sheets of cards that you are going to have to cut out on your own and uh, these cards are multi-use and it's really interesting, really um, good use of cards. I'll go over how each one is laid out here. So if you move more than one hex, you're gonna have to draw danger. So you discard the top card and you look at the top here and the top is your danger. And these are going to be all different kinds of dangers that you're going to have to face. And they will often have a um, an identifying uh, terrain that if you are in, then you will face that danger. So for instance here, horse crossing planes breaks leg while running. So if you are in the planes and you, um, then one of your horses breaks a leg while running and, and it must be killed. Horse supplies, uh, horse supplies food instead of hunting. So you will lose one of your horses, but you will get food for that turn. Uh, some of the other dangers on natives destroy the nearest traps. You might have to destroy a trap that you put on, on the map there and remove the trap but you can also reuse the trap. Um, in the night, if you are in an alpine terrain, the natives raid stealing D6 uh, horses. One horse on a river, so if you are on a river space, uh, breaks its leg and must be killed. Then sometimes you will have to roll for different events, and there's a whole bunch of charts in this game. And uh, here is one of the main pages of all the charts. You have different charts for crossing dangerous rivers. Uh, for getting lost, for combat, for discovering mountain passes, for checking for traps, for hunting, for mountain climbing, uh, for searching for animal trails, for when you encounter different trappers, when you encounter Spanish dragoons, and you also have a danger event chart. So you will have to roll on this chart and all kinds of dangerous things can happen. So it is pretty easy for your crew members and your outfit to get killed outright uh, in the uh, game that the creator was playing. On his very first turn, he uh, one of his uh, members got struck by lightning and died. So And he hadn't even left Missouri yet. Uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty funny. But then... Um, you can move into an already explored hex. So then you're gonna to have to draw a card and you're gonna to have to look down in the lower left corner to see if you have some kind of encounter. And if you do have an encounter, then you're going to draw one of these encounter chits depending on if you are in the northern region, the central region, or the southern region. And those are gonna be different things like different, maybe um, a band of competing trappers will come out possibly some Spanish dragoons or some different uh, tribal people. And anytime you discover a new uh, tribal people, you have to uh, declare a tribal policy and you can approach them, you can hide, you can approach them to trade, you can try to uh, become friends with them. Then you roll on your friendship, friendship table. There is a chief table. So you can choose to have combat with them. You can try to cheat them. You can ignore them. And then sometimes the tribe will also have a strategy in the way that it approaches you. And depending on how that interaction goes, you can trade with them. You can fight them. And if you fight them, there's a, on the backs of these cards are called the Warpath cards. And these are going to be little individual charts that you will roll on to help determine what kind of combat you are going to have. So one of the main things you're gonna be doing there is you're going to be moving into unexplored hexes. So right now, this is a hex that I have explored. It was a mountain and I found a pass. The pass means that it's easier to travel through that mountain on uh, upcoming turns. So if I was gonna be moving from here to here, that would cost me a movement of three. So I would move that. First, I would roll on the lost chart to see if I was lost. 
So on the lost, if you roll a one, two, or three, you are lost, but you get bonuses depending on how many scouts you have. And right now I have two scouts. And if you see, my scouts are actually uh, tribal people. They're uh, American Indians here. I have a Ute and a Shoshone. And so those will give me bonuses to how I can, to help me explore unexplored hexes. And those can also give me bonuses for when I meet um, other tribes of the same type. But if you move into an unexplored hex, eventually you're going to uh, flip over to the next card and you're going to see if you are in the Rockies, which is this gray area, then I have discovered a lake. So then you're going to draw a little lake and then uh, sometimes you will discover rivers where rivers begin or offshoots of already established rivers. You will also find discoveries. So discoveries are how you get victory points depending on, you know, on this one, if you drew this card, if you were in a plains, a mesa, or an alpine terrain, you would find a large gang of elk congregating and you would get five victory points. Now the thing is with discoveries is you don't get that, those victory points right away. You do have to wait until you go back to a town to tell people about your discoveries. You know, this isn't, they didn't have the internet back then. They weren't able to just uh, take a picture and upload it to uh, to Instagram. Uh, they would have to meet up and tell people about their discoveries and, and and share their map information with each other. And so that is how you actually get victory points. And then once a year, uh, during this time, you know, they would travel to do their exploring and their trapping. And instead of going all the way back to their established uh, towns, they would establish these Mountie, uh, Rocky Mountain rendezvous locations throughout the territory. And once a year, all the mountain men would meet up at these rendezvous territories to share their information, to trade. Um, uh, Indian American Indians would meet up with them to trade and have big, you know, they're, they're kind of like these big yearly celebrations that would happen. I believe at the beginning of each spring that would happen. And it would be a time to regroup you. And at that time, you can uh, hire more men. You can hire more gu uh, guides. You can buy more equipment for your outfit. You can sell your, uh, your, your pelts. You can trade your pelts. And then you can also trade in any discoveries you've made for victory points. And here are the, the different things that you can buy and all of that kind of stuff. So it's a really interesting game. I am having a great time playing it. It really does give that feel of exploring, of mapping. Now you're supposed to draw on these with these washable crayons, but I'm having a really hard time getting the, the, the crayon to stay and to look nice. So I've kind of switched over to using uh, dry erase markers, but even those when I'm moving the chits around uh, kind of like scrape off. So I, I'm thinking about actually, I'm just going to uh, order some transparency sheets for when I play and just kind of like clip those on to uh, the board here and then draw on those transparency sheets with markers so it'll be easier to keep track and I don't kind of like get this uh, original board all, all messed up. So this is just a portfolio game. It does come in just a plastic bag. And there is some DIY elements that you need to do, like cutting out all the cards. But I love the way that all the different cards, the way that they have multiple uses on the sh on the front or back, and then just the different kinds of things that happen in the different um, seasons, and how you play a time limit. That is really cool. So just you know, you can sit down for thirty minutes, play through a season, and that could be one session of a game. And the next time you sit down, you're in the next season, and you just play until you've uh, discovered, mapped enough land, and you have enough resources to build your trading outpost, and then you count up your victory points and see what happens there. Here we have our map key. So that you have mountains, alpines, mesas, plains, brush, desert lakes, rivers, uh, mountain pass, and animal trails. And those all give you like certain bonuses for when you're rolling on your charts to discover certain things. Uh, you can have uh, better, better results when you're hunting or fishing and that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, really interesting game. I am really glad I purchased it. It does remind me a lot of one of my favorite games um, what is it? Lost Valley? My mind is completely blank and I don't have it 
out on my shelf right now but i'm going to do a video on that next and kind of like compare the two a little bit but it, this did re really remind me of um reading john muir and reading that kind of uh travel log uh non-fiction of people who are exploring america and uh, I spent a lot of time on the John Muir Trail and in the Sierra Nevadas and Yosemite uh, growing up in, in, in California. And so um, I, I have a fondness for this kind of thing, even though I'm not really into camping anymore. But um, I still like reading about it. And when I was young and we would go to uh, different, uh, like the, the sequoias, the, the, the big trees, I always liked to going to the gift shops and buying books about the region and reading those um, while you know driving home with my family and stuff so yeah that was a look at rocky mountain man if you are interested in it you can get the, the uh, portfolio now and i will post a link in the description so all right guys well i hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you later bye bye